Hi everyone, it's Unit 6. We're in Rocks and Minerals, so today we're going to be focusing just on minerals. It's a pretty straightforward unit. I'm going to explain page 16 on the reference table, so make sure you have page 16 out in front of you so you can like follow along um, rather than just looking on the screen. So get your reference table out, and here we go. This is page 16. It's pretty much going to give you, I would say, over 80 to 85% of the answers for the mineral questions. So I'm just going to quickly run down the chart. Um, this side here is the luster, which is the way the mineral reflects light. It's going to be the metallic or non-metallic or either if it's the mineral hematite. Uh, the next column is hardness. Uh, this is going to be the resistance to being scratched. So low hardness means the mineral is easily breakable, um, it's powdery, so like talc is your lowest number one, and the harder it is, um, the less it is prone to being scratched. And the higher the number, or the if the number is equal to, it could scratch the mineral less than it. So for example, if we pick uh, quartz, which is a seven, and we compare it to fluorite, which is a four, quartz is a seven and fluorite is a four. So Quartz can scratch fluorite. Um, fluorite is a 4, so fluorite could scratch dolomite, which is a 3.5, but fluorite cannot scratch amphibole, which is a 5.5. So the only thing that it can scratch is a number lower or equal to itself. So quartz can scratch another piece of quartz, because the numbers are equal. The next section is the breakage pattern, which is up here. You got cleavage. If it breaks in uh, one smooth side or flat sheets, it's got cleavage. So if it's got a check mark next to it in the cleavage column, it's got cleavage. So all these. And then if it doesn't break in, in sheets or smooth, so it's all jaggedy and broken, it's called fracture. There's only one, two, three, four, seven of those. Common colors just shows the range of colors that the minerals can come in. Distinguishing characteristics are just random facts that are particular to that mineral. Things I want to point out is that there's only a couple that show streak. One, two, three, four, five, six. That looks like all of them. So the streak is the true color of the mineral. A good example of that is for pyrite. Pyrite looks brassy yellow, but it has a green to black streak, so the mineral is actually green to black. The streak is the true color. The uses column is just what it's used for in real life. Uh, composition is the chemical composition, what elements are in it, and these elements are located on the bottom, so you can see which ones are which. If the mineral has a silicon and an oxygen in it, it's called a silicate mineral these are the most common minerals uh, on the planet so if I were to circle all the silicates I would say right here because it's got one SI and one O not this nope yes no yes no 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 yep 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 so those are all of them and then your mineral names are on the side. Just pay attention to pyroxene. It's got a nickname under it. It's also called augite. Amphibole is also called hornblende. And potassium feldspar is called orthoclase. So like I said, like 80% of the questions are going to be based off this chart. So it's like, where's Waldo? Just look for the right answer and uh, you'll get it. Okay, moving on. I made a summary cheat sheet for you. This is the general things you got to remember besides using page 16. So the first thing is the internal arrangement or structure of the atoms is going to cause the physical properties in the mineral. So like its hardness, its breakage pattern, anything physical trait about it, its density uh, is going to be from the internal arrangement of the atoms. The most common minerals are silicates. We just talked about that. Silicates are in the shape of a silicon tetrahedron, which is a pyramid shape with one silicon ion in the middle of it and four oxygens around the outside. I will attempt to draw a picture of that for you in a second. Uh, number four, minerals can scratch others if the hardness is greater than or equal to the other mineral. We just talked about that as well. And the streak test is the true color of the mineral in powder form. And obviously, oops, I put number five twice, that's okay. Use your reference table, page 16. So I'm going to draw a silicate for you. It's going to be really bad, but I'm going to try 
It's like a pyramid shape like this. It's 3D. So there would be a silicon ion in the middle. And then there would be four oxygens around the outside. That's what it looks like. It's never in any other shape. It's a pyramid, silicon in the middle, four oxygens on the outside. All right, that's pretty much it. So we're gonna do some practice questions. So have your reference table out. Um, if you have to go back and look at this page, that's okay. So, and it also might be good to write some of this stuff down on a separate sheet of paper so you have it. All right, number one. The diagram below represents a crystal shape and the type of cleavage of two different minerals. The crystal shape and type of cleavage are determined mainly by what? I don't like to give guarantees, but 99% um, of the time, if you see something about the arrangement of the atoms in the question, it's probably the right answer. I've rarely seen that as a choice and not that not been the right answer. Um, but like we said, to understand it, the atomic arrangement of the atom is for the physical properties such as hardness and uh, breakage pattern. So it's C. Number two, which property can be observed in this picture? Well, if you didn't know what it was off the top of your head, you can go look at muscovite mica on the page and it will tell you uh, if it has uh, cleavage or fracture. But since this is in thin sheets... This is cleavage. So that would be A. Uh, the diagram below represents mass and volume of a mineral sample. These measurements were used to determine the density of the mineral. What is the density of the mineral? This formula is on the front of your reference table. Density equals mass divided by volume. If you look at the triple beam balance, it looks like 60 grams. And then they did the water displacement method because it's an irregular object. So they, it started at 25, and then it went up to 35. So that's a 10 milliliter difference. So you do 60 grams divided by 10 milliliters, and you should get a 6 grams per milliliter. So it's not actually, it's a mineral question, but it's more related to, uh, this is actually prologue, because it's a density formula. All right, number four, the diagram below shows the index minerals of Mohs hardness scales compared with some common objects. Which statement is best supported by the diagram? Pause the video and look at it, and then get an answer, and then unpause it. Okay, so let's go one by one. If fingernail will scratch calcite, so a fingernail looks like it's 2.5, will that scratch calcite? No, calcite's three, that's out. Calcite will be scratched by a copper penny. Is copper penny harder than calcite? Yes. So that's it. It's barely, but it is. So B is right. Let's check the other ones just in case. Appetite will scratch topaz. Let's see. Appetite is a 5. Topaz is an 8. Not going to happen, appetite. Uh, D. A steel file has a hardness about 7.5. No, 6.5. So B is the only good answer. Which model best represents a silicon oxygen tetrahedron? Remember, it has to be in a pyramid, so C and D are out. And then it has to be one silicon atom in the middle and four oxygens around the outside, so A is the right answer. They flipped B. Actually, there's just way too many atoms in this picture anyway. It's not even a pyramid. Number six, which element found in both biotite mica and muscovite mica make up the greatest percentage by volume of Earth's crust? So we should first check the elements in biotite mica and muscovite mica. So we got here and here. So if we go to this chart on page one, Percentage by volume in the crust is going to be the highest numbers are going to be uh, out of the elements that were there. It's silicon and oxygen. And remember, those are the most common elements in minerals. Oh, they only have one. So it's going to be uh, oxygen because that's the highest percentage, 94. Silicon's only 0.88 uh, volume. B. And we're on number seven. The data below give characteristics of the gemstone peridot. I think that's how you say that. Peridot is a form of what mineral? 
So you have to go to page 16. If you see any questions on minerals in the future, just go right to page 16. Like that's where you're going on the reference table. You're gonna to try to find non-metallic 6.5 green and that formula. Non-metallic, so we're down here, 6.5, cool, green, we're on the right track, and there's the formula, so this is olivine. All right, so that's minerals in a nutshell. Uh, I tried to keep it a little shorter, so uh, good luck, and I'll see you on the next one. Bye-bye.